hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> Ready, yo, giggle water and quilt. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. everyone and welcome to the unfiltered gentlemen and now breaking the seal all over the finer things of life greg scott and dan mm, seal broken mm. oh yeah consider it gone welcome in everybody <laughs> it's the unfiltered gentleman hi that's me that's greg or there him that's scott that's me and uh him him that's dan him be dan yeah <laughs> <laughs> Damn, be crazy. <laughs> Bitches be loco. Welcome in the show, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much for uh, telling people about this show. Oh, yeah. We much appreciate it because uh, we're too cheap to buy advertising. Oh, yeah. And True all that. our money that we do have goes to delicious beer. So uh, thank you for spreading the word. A lot of cool feedback from people. We talked about last week at Luponic Distortion Feedback. Uh, love it. Keep it coming. Keep sending us uh, your, your beer pictures. In yep. fact, Hashtag show us your beers. Hashtag show yeah. us your beers. <laughs> I love that. Dan's a genius. Anyways, <laughs> welcome in the show. Uh, this is a special show for you guys. We'll be talking to the fellas, Nick and Nolan, over at Earth and Fire Brewing. They are uh, up in Paso Robles, California, on the central coast there, right across the freeway from Firestone. Wow. Snaps. If you know where Firestone is. Uh, they're a brand new, small little brewery. Opened up a few months ago, but we'll get into that uh, in just a little bit. But right now, uh, we're drinking one of their beers. It's quite fucking delicious. Yes, we'll talk. Is. We'll talk about it momentarily. Um, this is gonna be a, a short little bit from us, and we'll get into the interview. So before we get any further into things, let's get into Dale's beer of the week over on the East Coast. What's this? A broad drinking beer must be a she devil. Hey hey, so let's do a dark beer this time around. Today I am drinking Lefty's Brewing Company Chocolate Oatmeal Stout. Lefty's Brewing Company is based out of Greenfield, Mass, and it is one of the first beers that I had after moving back to Massachusetts where I was like, whoa, I think I'm going to dig this craft beer scene. It's that nice, dark, chocolatey color that I like to see as the weather's starting to get colder. Not a lot of fizz, not a lot of head, but it smells so good. It smells like oatmeal and that like dark chocolate. I just feel like you could take a bite out of it. The thing about this beer that I think is good is that it's a good transitional beer between your summer beers and your winter dark beers. It's much lighter than a normal stout, but it still has that flavor that you really want with a darker beer, that roasted malty chocolatey deliciousness. I will definitely be drinking a lot of this beer this Saturday because I'm heading to Lefty's Bacon, Beast, and Brew Fest, which sounds amazing, and I know it's going to be a lot of fun. By the time you hear this, I will have already been, but you can check out my Instagram because I will have a video up that'll just be an overview of the event. I'm going to be drinking beer, eating bacon. I'm going to be playing giant beer pong, so it's going to be a blast. I'm really excited about it. I wish y'all could be there. Until then, I would love to hear about like the darker beers that y'all are drinking, that you like. I'm a dark beer girl, so I would love to get suggestions. And uh, yeah, let me know. Back over to you guys. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, man. Wow. Beer, so, bacon, and beer pong? Giant beer pong. Yeah. What the hell? God damn, that sounds amazing. Hell yeah. That she lives like... life. I know. Man. Thanks God. for the invite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, solid invite over there. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. In fact, she has now gone to the beer, bacon, and whatever else <laughs> festival that was. Dang. Do you need anything after beer and bacon? Hey, it's true. You had me. Yeah. Uh, anyways, you can check her out at It's the Beer Girl on Instagram as well as Facebook. She posted a video of uh, the event of her there playing giant beer pong they're literally trash cans and like you know like beach balls oh. <laughs> it's pretty sweet uh she had a lot of beer and a lot of bacon god damn i'm jealous wow Hell yeah that damn. sounds great damn it I'm not, why don't they have bacon and beer fest out here that's right you know i feel like i hope i don't get in trouble with her for saying this i feel like the west coast does a little bit better job with beer than the <laughs> east coast <laughs> Uh oh i only say this Thanks. because i i had you know the the beer uh you know uh-huh box beer they send you every right. month whatever it's all craft beer a lot of east coast beers 
lot of beers I was not a fan of. Oh, Ooh. wow. Okay. Especially hey. East Coast IPAs. Hey, hey. Well, Sounds like a challenge. Yeah, West Coast no. is the best coast when uh, it comes oh, to IPAs. Yes. No. I don't, Especially don't, an IPA. We don't want to start that. We don't want no Biggie Tupac <laughs> going on over here. We yeah. saw what happened to them. Yeah, find me dead in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but much love to the East, too. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but what I was getting at after my backhanded compliments and. <laughs> just flat out insults <laughs> yeah was that the breweries out here don't do the fun things like the ones in the east coast like there's right. a lot of that like bacon and beer festival and the whatever and beer like yeah. they seem like they do a lot of that stuff out there where, all that fun stuff yeah we're like firestone's having their anniversary dinner coming up it's mm. 250 dollars a ticket oh yeah i would mother mother rat <laughs> much rather i would mother i would much rather to pay you know like 50 bucks and get some bacon and some beer yeah yeah so uh anyways i'm jealous yeah me too I agree. That that is a good point you made. I mean, you know, we got some good beer out here too. We just gotta make the festivities count, man. Some great beer out yes. here. Yes, yeah. we do. Mm-hmm. You know, West Coast IPAs, everybody. There you go. West Coast is the best. Hit it coast. up. Hit them up. Two pots. Yeah, there. you know, she was asking what what dark beers we're into. You know, she doesn't know about the West Coast, the Mega Black House, mm. <laughs> oh, Modern man. Times Mega Black House. Oh wow. Yeah, that's. You want to talk dark beer? That is delicious. Right now, we're drinking one of Earth and Fires. This is their chocolate stout. This thing just came out. Oh, I mean, they just opened. But this just came out. Last time I was there, they didn't have it. Oh, wow. Oh. This is... I like this a lot, uh, mm-hmm. especially fresh off the tap. And yes. they don't they don't bottles. This this came in a growler. Nice. Uh, it's nice. It's got a great mouthfeel to it. It's It's got a little bit of chocolate, but it's not like boom chocolatey, you know, <laughs> uh, which can get a little overwhelming at, at points right um i don't know what do you what do you fellas think of the the chocolate stout oh i like it it's pretty good it's good yeah you know i almost wish we could have had some of that peanut butter left over Ooh, mix them <laughs> mix together. It up. yeah oh, peanut butter chocolate just saved that, yeah. from last week you know what they were doing up there is they have a vanilla porter they're mixing the vanilla porter and the chocolate stout to have like a vanilla chocolate Oh, dark beer. A little swirl. Yeah, actually. it was pretty good. A beer swirl. It was wow. a beer swirl. It was pretty good. Oh, man. Uh, but I like the chocolate uh, pure just a little bit better. It's good. Mm, it's really good. I like it. It's got a good mouthfeel mm. to it. Nice and dark. So, uh, Dale, you asked about our dark beers. Earth and Fire's got a great dark beer. Or just go to Barrel Works where it's all <laughs> barrel aged, and <laughs> crazy expensive. Hell yeah. Uh, but if you if you guys ever see Mega Black House, Modern Times, because they have Black House, that's their regular. Mm. And Black House is pretty good, but Mega Black House. That's where it's at. That is where it's at, mm. both for beer and sexually. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Black House. Wait a minute. That was too much. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, what else? We're not going to do a uh, full run of things, but I do want to mention a couple things before we get into the interview. First is, uh, not only did I have a great time hanging out with Nick Nolan at Earth and Fire, they, they're they super cool guys. They were you know, talking about other breweries around that they like, you know, kind of off the air, and they recommended this place, uh, Bristol's Cider House, which was not too far away from where we were, and I, okay. excuse me, I am not a fan of cider at all. Okay. And I said, eh, and like, no, no, you got to try it. It's really good. It's not like girly American sweet fruit punch cider. Right. It's like British dry beer oh, really? style cider. Yeah. So we went because uh, the lady friend loves herself some cider and she likes the British. She lived in England for a year. So she really likes that British oh, okay. dry cider. We went. She very much approved. They had one that was like an IPA mixed with a cider is a hoppy cider. Really fucking good. Wow. They had one that they had aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, it tasted like whiskey and and some apple. Oh, okay, Ooh, right on. Really good. So that, See, that, that's a, what I'm talking about. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. It did okay. not drink like a fruity cider. It drank like beer. Yeah, or cocktail, you said you know? cider like initially kind of scared me away a little bit already. But yeah, anytime anybody says cider, I get soft. It's mm. like no. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like a manly cider. This was good. Yeah, this was yeah. manly cider. We like manly cider. Yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. You, once again, you guys are on the Central Coast, don't just check out Earth and Fire, but check out uh, Bristol Cider House. It was good stuff. Hit it up. Uh, was not disappointed at all. One thing we need to get to is uh, Chick of the Week. We can't not do Chick of the Week. Yeah, come on. I mean, come on. Who are we? <laughs> Don't stand up too quickly. It's Chick of the Day. We say it every week, and it never gets old, uh, but girls and beer 
flavors. So effing hot. Quite the mixture. Oh, they're quite the bu- uh, mixture. <laughs> Anyways, this week's Chick of the Week, you can find her on Instagram, at Hop Snobbery, H-O-P-S-N-O-B-B-E-R-Y, Hop Snobbery. That's funny. And uh, the picture I have here, though, showing the boys is her holding the Pliny. Ooh, yeah. nice Pliny. Talk about hot chicks and good beer. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a girl, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. A lot. I'm sorry when you when you match the pictures with the girl and the beer, I always get sidetracked. <laughs> mm-hmm. I only saw the girl. Yeah. <laughs> at my age, I only saw the beer. Yeah. You know. There's only certain things that work at that age. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what are, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found anything that works yet. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, so, anyways, check out Hop Snobbery on Instagram. She's uh, like like we're saying. She's really hot. She likes delicious beers like Pliny. Well, why not? She's, uh, any girl that knows about Pliny right. just, just moved herself up like uh, oh, yeah. eight points. Hell yeah. Most people don't even know what that is. Well, yeah. nowadays they're starting to, but girls especially. Yeah, but still now, yeah. Yeah, girls that's, uh, especially. That'd be a great first date, like question, you know? <laughs> just like at, at dinner, like, oh, so what do you do? Like, oh, I work in whatever industry, and I'm a podcaster, so mm-hmm. I'm super famous. Oh, what about you? Oh, you know, I do this and that. Like, oh, what kind of beards? Like, I like Pliny. Like, oh. Can I marry you? Yeah. <laughs> Keepa. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Keepa? Uh, anyway, so we've babbled on long enough. Like I said, interview with Earth and Fire Brewing Company. It's Nick and Nolan. These guys are hardworking uh, sons of bitches. They both have full-time jobs and then do the brewing. And also, they're the only employees. They, they brew it. They serve it. Uh, they're only open on the weekends. So make sure you check the hours before you head up on a Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, it's really good stuff. It's worth it, though. Worth stopping by. Earth and Fire Brewing. You can get them at earthandfirebrewing.com, ENF Brewing on Twitter, and then go to Facebook and search for Earth and Fire Brewing. Like I said before, we're drinking their uh, chocolate stout. When I was, It rotates. When I was up there, they had their uh, double IPA, their vanilla porter. They had a really good saison coming from wow. a guy who's not a huge saison person. Right. And they also had a Belgian when I was there. Uh, the morning I did the interview, they had they had what they called like a like the the fuck up IPA or something like that. It was a they went for the double IPA and they accidentally crossed the lines, and so it was their double IPA mixed with a Belgian. Oh, but it was fucking good. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, I got down on some of that. Oh wow! I went back later that night uh, just to drink, just to hang out and drink. Mm-hmm. They'd already kicked the keg. Oh, I was like, what do you mean it's gone? Like, yep, everyone wanted it. So, wow, uh, that was that was too bad. They should. Yeah, make some more of that. <laughs> yeah, this time do it on purpose. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, don't forget to check them out. You can check us out, theunfilteredgentleman.com, Facebook, it's Unfiltered Gentleman, Twitter, at Unfiltered Gents, and Instagram, the Unfiltered Gentleman. And like I uh, always fail to mention, 805-538-BEER is uh, our number if you'd like to call us Beer. or text us or anything like that. And uh, don't forget, when you're sending us beer pictures, hashtag... <laughs> Show us your beers. Show us your beers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the world's best hashtag. So uh, on to uh, Nick and Nolan of Earth and Fire Brewing, everyone. All right, everybody. Greg here from the Unfiltered Gentleman. Special podcast for you guys today. I am at the Earth and Fire Brewery. Sitting down with Nick and Nolan, you guys. Thank you so much for, for taking time out of uh, brewing delicious beer to uh, talk to us today. Got some questions for you. Uh, listeners submitted some questions. I got some questions. Uh, you guys are our very first uh, brewer, brewers to talk to us. We, we've reached out to everybody, and they're snobby, and they said, get some uh, episodes under your belt, and uh, we'll come talk to you. That's awesome. We yeah. truly appreciate that. Yeah. No, thank yeah, you, guys. Thanks for having us, Greg. Yeah. So Earth and Fire, we'll start off with the name. Why Earth and Fire? Well, originally, when, Aaron, or, uh, when Nolan and I were, were, were putting the idea together of opening a brewery and trying to come up with some names. You know, we wanted it to actually mean something. So we were trying to figure out how can we include our name and with, with what we do and what we're passionate about and what maybe we could create with our brand. And, uh, you know, originally what we'd really like to do and maybe in the future if we can expand the brewery is have like a wood fire stove oven and make that a focal point along with our, our brewing equipment. Nice. Right? Um, and along with that, so what we would do is we would take the grain, leftover grain, and maybe make dough, feed it to some cattle, use the cattle for food, kind of a sustainability thing to go along with the earth, right? Not only that, is it takes a lot of earth and a lot of fire to make beer. So that's kind of where we came up with the name. And the whole self-sustainability thing is a lot of, a lot of breweries are starting to kind of move that way, like um, Oscar Blues. 
they're kind of doing their own. Yeah, exactly. Like they're growing their own hops with leftover, you know, right. it's, it's really cool. You know, I should have done this to begin with. I'm with Nick and Nolan. I should probably have you guys talk about yourselves a little bit first. <laughs> that way we can distinguish the voices a little bit. I'll defer to Nolan first. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Nolan. I'm an engineer from Cal Poly. Um, I've been brewing for about 10 years. Um, met Nick about three years ago, something like that. And we started hanging out and became friends. And then we um, were brewing in the backyard and decided to start a brewery. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. kind of same thoughts. Uh, met with Nolan, we were both into beer. Uh, my wife had got me a kid to brew beer and we were chatting and he's like, I'm gonna brew in my backyard. You know, I've been brewing for a long time. You wanna come check it out? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Let's go blow a, a Sunday and, uh, and do what we love. And uh, I, I personally have a little bit of business background. And I, for a long time, I've been wanting to open a, a business of my own. I wasn't sure exactly what it would be. I just knew I needed to do it. Uh, and Because I saw my dad own a business and he was probably the happiest when he was running his own business because uh, he was a teacher by trade and, and that's what he did for a long time. And uh, I just found this, this was a great opportunity for Nolan and I. And you know, we did what a lot of people don't do and jump the line <laughs> and put it all on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, people ask us all the time, hey, why don't you guys brew your own beer? My answer is always, well, because other people do such a great job. <laughs> and everybody I know that brews beer always tells me how expensive it is. It's like, well, if I, I could just spend that money on some really great beer that someone else made and not screw it up, then why not just do that? But I mean, what was that that thought of like, oh, yeah, I'll brew my own beer. And then like, oh, yeah, I could totally make money with this. Like what, what gave you that confidence? What kind of pushed you in that direction? Uh, we have a lot of friends that are guinea pigs, and they've been great <laughs> to us, uh, friends and family. And they love free beer? <clears throat> yeah, free beer. And um, so we just kept brewing beer, making different beers. Um, we like our beer. We think it, you know, we've always thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. And so we just kept getting more and more feedback, and that's kind of what made us think, you know, hey, maybe we can make this work. Um, plus, craft beer is just booming right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's not a lot in the Paso area. We've got a few other bigger breweries, but no one real small. So we thought it would be a good time to get started and get our beer out there and see what happens. And we drink a lot of beer. <laughs> We've drank a lot of beer and, you know, there's a lot of good breweries out there. Um, but going along and tasting a lot of, you know, we did some, some road trip, you know, tasting other breweries and saw how successful they were. And, you know, not that they didn't have good beer, uh, but we both looked at each other like, we can make beer like this. Our beer is just as good as this if not better. And, and it's not that we're trying to put the other breweries down by any means. It's just, we, we want to hold ourselves to it a standard of having the best beer if we can. And yeah. we really felt that we could compete, you know, with other guys our size. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you have a great beer, you still, okay, this is really good, but I could, you know, if I did a little of this and a little of that, it'd be even better. So, no, absolutely. You know, you talk about being in Paso, not a lot of beer around here. I mean, there is kind of one of the biggest, right. at least in California, beer, which is uh, Firestone right across the freeway. Um, it's also a really big wine area around here, and it's slowly becoming beer. We had Firestone, now there's a Barrel House, and you guys. It's like, all right, slowly getting the beer in here. Um, how is your, you know, everyone talks about being connected. You talk about being connected with the earth and everything. How are you connected to Paso? So we connect with Paso. We try and use local ingredients whenever we can. Um, I've been talking to a few people that are starting to grow barley. Um, so here, hopefully in a year or two, we'll be able to have some locally grown barley. Um, there's local hops around here. We try and use that. And we're really focused on the locals around here. Um, we have a lot of locals that come in repeatedly and we love everyone that comes in. The locals keep us going, you know, as we keep going. Um, the local wineries have been awesome. We've made a lot of friends with them and reached out to all the wineries. Um, you know, we send people to them, they send people to us, um, you know, Halfway through a day of wine tasting, I just want a beer. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So it's great to have some variety in the uh, kind of booze side of things, you know, and the wineries have distilleries going up and the breweries going up. So it kind of all just makes a destination place for people when they visit Paso. Mm -hmm. And it makes a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like you said with the wineries and, you know, some of these other breweries here. It's really turned into a wet town. Uh, <laughs> so we felt maybe we could slip right into that and take right. advantage of it and, and be maybe the grandfather of beer in Paso, you know, years from now, mm -hmm. along with Firestone and Barrel House. Uh, but really, a big idea for Nolan and I, too, with, with Paso was we really wanted to be that neighborhood brewery. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't about going and getting out the, you know, the 15, 30 barrel system and, you know trying to go out there and distribute it everywhere. It was, let's, let's, you know, have face-to-face -face contact with the locals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's nice to have the tourists come in, especially, you know, with all the winery, they do come in. And, but 
I think no one can agree that we really wanted to be the, the neighborhood brewery. Yeah, I mean, that's how I found out. We talked about the, the wineries and stuff. I was in a, a tasting room, a wine tasting room, and some guy was talking to someone completely different. I was eavesdropping. And I was like, yeah, you know, my buddies have this new, uh, this new brewery. And I, uh, ears perked up. I was like, yes. <laughs> so, and all of a sudden, I scooted a little closer. He's like, yeah, it's called Earth and Fire. They just opened and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, taking notes on my phone. We're going there tomorrow. We, we, can't, we can't not go. Uh, we talked about Firestone and Bear House across the freeway. Do you guys feel like... You know, f you guys. You're our rivals. Let's let's throw stones, no, or is it like, hey, all. we're all friends and we're all making the same thing? And not at all. All the local breweries have been really supportive of us. <clears throat> um, you know, if we have ingredients we need or help we need, everyone's really, really super willing to help us out. Um, everyone, all the way down to Santa Barbara, has been awesome. You nice. Know? I mean, we we've made pretty good friends with everyone around, and it's really it's a big community. The brewers around here, mm-hmm. um, similar to the wineries, everyone knows we're all in it together. You know, we're not fighting Barrel House or Firestone. We're really against the big one. Yeah. It's really the only competition we have in our eyes. We needed help for the grand opening. And, you know, we had a local brewery, Chris Chambers at Dunbar Brewing in Santa Maria, really helped us out on some, on some fermenters oh, yeah. to have enough beer to ferment <laughs> for the grand opening. Because uh, when all this came to a head, we're like, all right, we got to be open for 4th of July. And we really had a lot of support from local uh, the breweries that even showed up for the grand opening. And we're here hanging out with us, and it was a great time. Nice. You know, you talk about, uh, you know, kind of everyone against one. What's different about your guys' beer that's going to make people want to drop in and be like, hey, I like this place? So I think um, because we can do small batches, we can do some different stuff, and we can actually take probably a lot of requests from people who come in and say, all right, well, let's try that. Let's check it out. Sure, what the hell, yeah. Yeah, what the hell. And, and you know, shit, no, one, no one's let a lot of customers go back there and actually – hang out with him why he brews yeah you know i think that alone you know i had a customer come in and tell us you know you're if you provide a good customer service it makes your beer 99 percent better absolutely so not only do we want quality beer but we want to be the best provide the best service and people see the face of the brewing and the companies and you know i think that goes in hand with our beer yeah it makes a lot of sense i was talking with somebody actually just yesterday and we're, we're trying to it's a it's a, a home brewer and his friend works for a brewery which i won't mention the name now but he's saying like hey we should do it at the brewery and then he called me back oh we can't the owner's a dick yeah, exactly <laughs> we, we can't do it at the brewery he he not only hates me because i homebrew like he finds him as competition but he doesn't want you there so we're gonna go to this place instead which is another brewery who was like yeah come come hang out like no big yeah. deal so yeah being cool to your people i think is is even bigger than having great beer obviously agree, you don't have shit beer but uh, but yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. How do you guys plan on being relevant in this huge, booming craft beer industry? What can you do to kind of cut off that piece? Well, I think, uh, you know, it, it's going to be... A, we, I think we don't necessarily want to compete with Firestone. I don't think there's a competition there. We'd like to come in, like I said, and, and be the neighborhood brewery and, uh, you know, be different that way with providing a customer service because just like you were saying i've been in multiple breweries brewers and uh right down to the bartender you know i get a kind of a beer thrown at me and she walks away right there's no you know interaction or anything mm-hmm. like that that's where i think we can find our niche and kind of get our foot in the door in the local area and right now we're not distributing we're getting all local tap room um so i think as we you know find that following in that niche we can grow and get into the market that way here locally yeah, I think the other thing we do is we look for doing something different. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our beers are kind of have an old base, you know, kind of a classic porter base, but then we put a little twist on it by adding some vanilla or, you know, the IPAs aren't necessarily super bitter. They're made a little bit more smooth and a little more flavor and aroma. So just trying to find little different things to do where we can make our beer taste a lot different mm-hmm. so yeah. that we're not just copying, you know, what everyone around here is doing because those guys are already doing it so well there's right. no reason for us to try and do the same thing mm-hmm. you know, i mean not everybody's going to like your beer but that's why you have multiple beers on the board you know and, and pick one and you can't please everybody but y- you know you want to find your niche and say hey this is ours and you know you like it or don't like it yeah i mean and this one that i'm drinking right now do we have a name for this yet no are we allowed to talk about it <laughs> yeah yeah talk about a, it sure we can talk about yeah, this it this is this is Fucking delicious. It's a, uh, let's be honest, it's all, yeah, it's I mean, a fuck it's up. A, it's pretty much a fuck up. We had, <laughs> we had a keg of, uh, so we're post it notes, all yeah. right? Yeah, some extra um, double IPA, so I put it into a five gallon keg. And then um, I was trying to carbonate quickly because 
of course. Right. I have to. Just Yeah, production. Um, and some of the Belgian beer actually got into the double IPA. So it's got it's basically a double IPA with some Belgian beer in it. So it's kind of a Belgian double yeah. IPA type thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. I've, I've seen a couple of local places. I mean, not local here, but, you know, small, you know, local breweries kind of start to do that, like the IPA and the Belgian. And it's not widely popular, but I, I fucking love it. It's a great new little mix. Kind of right. takes the edge off that IPA if you're not looking for that crazy bitterness. And, yeah. and it kind of does the same with the Belgian because Belgians can be yeah. kind of funky sometimes. So Absolutely. Kind of mellow that out. And yeah, they, they mix well together. Plus, yeah. your guys' double IPA is fucking phenomenal. Good. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's probably my favorite beer of yours. Um, all right, so let's talk. We talked about how small you guys are. And I was back there when you were mixing earlier. I mean, you guys are, are small. What, tell me about what kind of equipment you have and kind of like, you know, walk me through a day of brewing, that kind of thing. So we have a barrel and a half system that is custom made. Uh, my dad and I built it. Um, I drew up the plans for it. We built all the burners and the brew sculpture to hold the kettles. We got some 55-gallon stainless steel drums from Justin Winery. Mm. Um, they gave them to us. We cut them up, put valves and stuff in them to make them be able to make beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we found a big wine mixing tank for the boil kettle and did the same thing with that, put some valves in it. And then we built the false bottom, we've built the spar jar, and we've built pretty much everything on the brew sculpture or the brew side ourselves. Um, you know, we bought pumps and stuff. And then we purchased some fermenters just because those are pain in the ass to make. <laughs> so <laughs> we figured we'll let somebody else who knows what they're doing do that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's basically it's a big homebrew type setup. You know, we mill the grain ourselves in a small mill and dump it in, stir it in by hand to the mash tun and then pump over and sparge into the boil kettle. Yeah, and I'll have pictures up on our on all of our social medias if you want to check it out. I got a picture of him brewing. I mean, to get this into perspective, I mean, you were literally using like a, a boat paddle back there just mixing it up. I mean... Yeah, it's basically a just a small mash paddle. It's mixing up a barrel and a half of beer. So you guys haven't even been open at this point, uh, what, two and a half months? About two and a half months. So... I guess this would be a projection, but how much beer can you make in a year? So I think I did the math, and if we sold everything, it was like a hundred barrels. <laughs> hundred and fifty barrels, I think, is like our max okay. output. So I mean, like real small output. Yeah, it's, and there's no way you can really distribute aside from maybe a couple of local tap rooms. Yeah, it goes into plan. You know, hand in hand with our business plan originally too is you know we both work full time. You know, during the week, uh, so. We also knew being a new, no, new being a new business that we uh, we couldn't go out and get a business loan, which is why you know we knew if we didn't have a ton of money we needed to get creative, mm-hmm. and that's where Nolan and, and his dad came into play in building the equipment. Uh, so you know we're just taking it one step at a time and let demand allow us to grow. Yeah, I mean that's kind of where we started. We were sitting in the backyard talking about well you know we can save up a hundred grand and go get a loan for three hundred grand and right. put in a ten barrel system and have it sweet. But then you open that first day or you start brewing that first day and you have 10 barrels of beer sitting there and you yeah. have, you know, no customer base, no distribution base. So it's hard to kind of make that jump. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Baby steps. So that's, we thought, yeah, let's start small and then we'll let it grow itself. You know, let's get some customers, get some followers and then we'll grow as we can and let it grow itself. And you guys seem to be well-educated people have real smart people jobs on the side. So, yeah. you know, you were like, oh, let's, let's go all in. It'll yeah. be great. We'll be rich. So, yeah. I mean, and you still, like you said, you still have your full-time jobs yeah. outside of this. And yeah. Um, opening a brewery, I don't know if that makes you rich. Yeah. I, think, I think the quote I've heard is, uh, the best way to make a lot of money into little money is to open a brewery. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you guys choose your ingredients? Is there something about, different about your ingredients or is there anything special about that? It's pretty, I mean... Pick it based on taste. Um, there's a couple of big grain suppliers, and we're using the same as pretty much everyone else. Mm-hmm. But we try and pick the best ingredients for the best flavor, um, which just kind of depends on the beer. Same with the hops. It depends on what beer we're making, what kind of style we want to go for. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, we try and use local stuff whenever we can. We're trying to find a local vanilla supplier for our um, uh, vanilla porter. Um, we've had a few people help us or, you know, customers come in. They're like, oh, you should try this place. You should try that place. Sure. Which is awesome because then that gives us some help to go find that local vanilla or local whatever. Right. Uh, How did you guys decide on which? I mean, you, you have five brews, five beers on tap to, you know, to purchase or whatever. How did you decide on those? And can you tell us what they are also? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think at first, Nolan and I were just like, well, wh what do we like? What do we want to try? You know, what's going to taste good? Let's see, what do these guys make, and how can we change it up and do our own style of it? Uh, so that's what we did. We just did some test batches on, on stuff we thought we'd like and <clears throat> picked the ones we did like and dumped the ones we didn't like. And uh, Well, we didn't dump them. We drank them, let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> dumped them down the throat. <laughs> you they never didn't waste. Go on yeah. yeah. Research. Exactly. And which, which beers do we have? Uh, which five? So uh, kind of to build on that, we took the five or our, we had to talk about three in the beginning and it turned into five real quick. <laughs> we were trying to make a little something for everybody, but filling in the holes of people around us. So we've got uh, Saison, uh, which is pretty much a classic Saison farmhouse ale, real light, good, easy summer drinking beer. Um, a Belgian, a uh, vanilla porter, a double IPA, and a chocolate imperial stout. Those mm -hmm. are kind of the five, I'll say, main beers. And then we've done some test batches of a uh, single IPA, as well as uh, the double IPA with some different dry hops and dry hopping for longer, just to kind of play around and see what happens. Nice. Uh, I guess this is probably more a question for Nolan. Uh, to walk us through a typical day of brewing. Like, what do you what do you do? So typical day. You is, open the door and then what? I open the door. I walk in, I look around and see if it's a mess. Because if it's a mess, I know Nick had a crap ton of people in here last night. <laughs> and he got home or got out of here late. <laughs> uh, then I go in the back, uh, start putting fittings and valves on the hot liquor tank, um, write up or look up the recipe, get it written on the board um, so I know what I'm doing for the day. And then get the water going, start heating that up. Uh, I start weighing and weighing grain, grinding the grain. And then once the water's hot, I'll pump it over into the mash tun. And then from there, I'll stir the grain in and then let that sit for a while. Um, while that's sitting, I get the hot liquor tank going again, get hot water for the sparge. Once I hit the time on the mash tun, um, I'll start pumping over and sparge that off into the boil kettle. And then that'll boil. Um, we'll add the hops in there. And then once that gets done, we'll cool it through a chiller and put it in a fermenter and that's pretty much a day nice um you guys opened the brewery like we said just a couple of months ago has it been you know significantly different than you thought it would be <laughs> absolutely i'll be honest uh <laughs> you know Noel and i chat and we're like shit man we may have done all this work in here because this used to be a veterinarian's office oh really yeah and we did all the work in here uh these these were all offices and we did wow. it with friends and family yeah uh to keep the cost down again uh so we're breaking our backs, working full time, you know, getting this place ready. And we're saying, fuck, we could open the doors and nobody may walk in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was the total opposite, man. We opened the doors and this place was packed. You couldn't move in here. Nice. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've got the support of the locals and a pass. So it's, it's been fantastic. And I think it's been better than I think for me than I, I really anticipated right off the bat. I mean, because, yeah, we've been open two and a half months, but we're only open on the weekends. So, oh, you know, really? 17, 18 days to be wow. exact, something like that. So, yeah. And can I ask, and you can tell me no or, or shut up, but yeah. have you guys broke even or made a profit yet? Or The business pays for itself, yeah. Really? That's pretty good, especially two and a half months in and yeah. only we open on the weekends. That's, that's amazing. And, and that was the goal, doing everything you know, ourselves and with friends. And f I, honestly, this place would not be open. It would still be a concept. We'd still be working on it if it wasn't for friends and family. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, all right, I, I do a little work... With, with government agencies, especially local city and counties. So, and I've seen people try to open up breweries. How big of a pain in the ass was it from a, a legal standpoint? You know, what people just think like, oh, you buy some tanks, you buy a little of this, you get a bar up and uh, you open up a brewery. But I don't think they realize the behind the scenes legalities of opening up a brewery. Yeah, that <laughs> was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's the so, biggest pain. TTB, which is the federal government, was a huge pain in the ass. Um, not that they were necessarily difficult, but they just didn't want to do it quickly. Oh, I mean, they're kind not. of on their own timeline. And we, I mean, we were seven, almost eight months waiting for that. <laughs> we had this place pretty much ready and we're, I mean, we were dragging our feet kind of doing it. I mean, we were coming in here a couple of days a week and just kind of finishing up things like, you know, all right. And we were still waiting on that federal approval, um, which is really just so we can pay them taxes. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, I mean, you, when you submit your application for that brewer's notice to the TTB, you have to send in a signed lease. Mm. So you're paying on a lease the whole time wow. you're sitting there waiting. That is part of the deal. 
uh, is you have to have a lease so they can see your setup, your you know your square footage. They wanted to know you know what where your how far are your windows off the ground? Can people crawl through your windows? <laughs> yeah, they want to know where, where the bar is at, where is the brewing area, where wow. is every little thing. And, you know, we understand there's four thousand breweries in, in in the United States now mm-hmm. plus, and they take care of all those. But you know, come on. Give a guy a call back. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're paying rent. And in fact, yeah. we want to pay you taxes. Yeah, exactly. That's all we want to do. Like, yeah. let's, uh, let's be the, yeah, it's insane. What about like locally? I know you got to get permitting. I mean, was that? So our local ABC office was great. They were super helpful. Every time we want to talk to them, they were like, oh yeah, just do this. You know, they were really easy to work with. They were great. Even the local city was really awesome. Well, that's um, good. You know, they were sticklers for ADA. Sure. But once we talked to them about what they really wanted, what the purpose was, they worked with us and they were like, oh, yeah, you know what? You don't have to do this $20,000 thing. You can do this $10,000 thing. Mm -hmm. So that was super cool with them. Yeah, that's good. I've seen uh, breweries have to really jump through hoops just from a city level. Uh, Fig Mountain being one of them, one of their other locations, not their original location. I I was a part of that process and some of them just have to bend over backwards and it, it took quite some time to get them open. But to go on with what Nolan's talking about with the city... They're a true believer in having the brewer, you know, the breweries here. We were dealing with the city inspectors, and they have their you know monthly or weekly meeting with the city manager. And he had sent them out this email, and Brian, with the city, who's the inspector, forwarded me this email. And it was an email that stated, what does a successful city, what are the 11 things it has to make a, a successful city? Mm-hmm. And number 11 on there was a brewery. Really? So they're very, very supportive of having breweries in here. Well, and I mean, um, so. it's, it's so alcohol, I don't want to say alcohol is in like, you know, drunk, but it's so alcohol friendly. They got all the wineries right. around, you know, the Firestone's already here. So I, I could imagine that they want to keep that going. I mean, people don't, come up to Paso just to hang out. They come up for wine tasting or uh, you know, wakeboarding yeah. or whatever. I mean, that's, that's what's built this town over the last 15 years. I grew up yeah. here, and when I was young, it was a small farm town. I mean, there was not much to do. We were excited when we got the Walmart. That was like the big deal. <laughs> I re- hey, we made it. We, yeah. got, we got a Walmart. I've been coming up here for 25 years. I, re- I remember <laughs> like, oh, shit, there's a Walmart now. Yeah. Hey, this is a real town yeah. now. All right. I remember when the movie theater was that little shithole on uh, Spring Street or whatever, that little yeah, tiny the Fox one. Theater. Yeah, Yeah. And now it's going to be like a distillery, right? Yeah, Refine's, yeah, Refine's yeah. going to go in there. That's going to be super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, the city's done a great job of encouraging that, and the wineries have helped build the city and the community. And it, everyone's kind of in it together. You know, We all know it's a tourist town, but right. the locals like it too. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of got to cater both ways, and that's what's cool is you know, when it's slow in the winter for tourism, all the locals come out and yeah. go out and drink and hang out, <laughs> which is awesome. So there's... You know, hopefully not really in too much of a lull is the idea. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why is, uh, as an industry, why is craft beer, do you guys think, growing so rapidly right now? I mean, it's, it's huge. Like, nobody wants to drink anything that costs under five bucks. <laughs> I think that the consumer now is changing, and they want to know more about what they're consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, we've kind of gone away from the mass-made cheese and beer and stuff of the you know 60s 70s where everyone just yeah. was everything was out of a box or a can and people like that local feel and craft breweries can give that you know we're back there making it by hand we're actually right. like you said i'm we're mixing it in the grain we're doing it all by hand um and i think the consumer is getting smarter that they're kind of going away from the big box store the mega corporation stuff of well it's just here it's the cheapest thing we can make Right, and they're willing to pay a little more for actual quality and taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot of it is a stem from too. You've got this generation coming up that, for years now, has realized they can brew their own beer. Yeah, you can home brew, and I think generations ago, years ago, my father-in-law, whoever, it wasn't well known that hey, I can go and I can brew. You didn't have the access to the ingredients you have now. You know, uh, home brew stores, stuff like that. So I think. You know, the big boom piggybacks off people being able to homebrew and being more familiar with beer. Yeah, and it also seems like, I don't know what you guys think of this, as it seems like food has become a more important thing, too. It's like, it used to be, like, oh, we'll go to McDonald's, grab a cheeseburger, whatever. Now it's like, F McDonald's, Habit or Bust, or, you know, like whatever local burger joint. And kind of as food has gotten more in demand at, at a better quality, it's like beer, you know, just everybody wants better quality, everything. Plus, I think it's, uh, it's becoming less of a mystery because before it was like, oh, Stone IPA. Right. I've never heard of that. Just yeah. Miller Lite, please. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, Stone IPA. Everyone has that right, now. Exactly. Yeah, everyone was kind of trained that there is one style of beer, which is the American adjunct lager. And now people realize there's more to beer than just that. Yeah, bubbles and, I think and alcohol. the artisan thing is big. 
people like like Nolan yeah. said they love that handcrafted the local guy the guy willing to break his back that's not you know piggybacking off you know this 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 board tr- trustee corporation you know yeah it, it's easier to hand you guys money than yeah, to hand right. Anheuser Busch money right I can see that what is the biggest barrier to being in the craft beer industry honestly it's the federal approvals <laughs> that's what I would say yeah it is I mean they really it seems at times and, and, and you know the past was great but even at the local level it seems at times that people or, or the government doesn't want to let businesses open mm-hmm. they really don't they make it as hard yeah. as possible we just want to pay you taxes we, yeah, yeah it's crazy. we want to be part of the community and give you guys money that's you know yeah it seems insane since you guys are so new what's been like the most effective way of spreading the word about this place Word of mouth, you know, it's really been, and social media, you know, we haven't done any marketing and to go back with, with the local crowd here, with the, with the support of the town, we've had so much support. The papers, multiple papers have come in here, I mean, you know, and done interviews with us. They've done, you know, some articles on us and, mm-hmm. uh, it, just cause they heard about us opening. Hey, we want to support you guys. We want to support the next brewery. And you know. yeah, I mean, it's that and. I mean, you, Greg, too. Hey, like this, exactly. Right? I'm famous. Social You're media. <laughs> putting us out there. You yeah. came by to talk to us and hang out with us, and everyone's going to hear about it now. I mean, to be honest, if you guys had shitty beer, I wouldn't come in. <laughs> you guys have really well, beer, so. I guess that's a good sign. It's like I want to yeah. talk about I want people to come in and like, hey, if you're coming to Paso for Firestone, make sure you also stop by these small places, too. Glowing endorsement from Greg. We <laughs> don't have <laughs> shitty beer. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that on Yelp. It's not shitty beer. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Um, all right. So some listener questions. <laughs> What is your favorite food to have with craft beer? Which is really wide open because you could choose any beer yeah, at that point. Yeah, it depends on the beer. Yeah. Absolutely. Like barbecue, yeah. some Mexican food. I definitely love barbecue. Barbecue's like, great. We've been able to get a couple barbecue trailers out here. Mm. And it seems like those are pretty big hits uh, versus, you know, you know, your standard food truck. Right. Uh, you know, and that's give and take depending on the weekend. But I really, I love barbecue and beer. I would agree with that, and not only because barbecue is delicious with beer, but when I'm barbecue in the backyard, <laughs> you got to drink beer. beer. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll open up a nice 22 and sit there and hang out, out and, you know, You can't barbecue or... without a beer in your hand. Absolutely. This is like, my left hand isn't doing anything. It needs to be holding <laughs> a beer. What the hell? Um, let's see. Listener Mike wants to know, bottles or cans? I know you guys aren't bottling or canning yet, but uh, bottles or cans? I- I'd like to try to, I mean, a lot of it's going to be, I think, financially focused, <laughs> but I'd really like to try to dip into both, do something cool with cans. It's kind of, kind of a new trend too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of a packaging engineer by trade and a can is a better package. Yeah. As long as you don't drink from the can, if you pour it out, right. if you drink from the can, it tastes like shit. Yeah. I've done side-by-side taste tests with beers, bottle, can, and if you drink from the bottle, Tastes fine, but when you drink from a can, it gets a weird taste. Yeah, we've done it on the show even. Same beer, drink it out of the can, drink it in a glass. It's yeah. crazy different. And, and I saw, I don't know if you guys ever watch uh, Bar Rescue with John Taffer. He was actually talking about the science behind that. He was yeah. saying, like, if you don't pour it right, the wrong amount of air escapes. And if you pour it too slow, the air sits in your gut and makes you full. And if you pour it too fast, and there's not, you got to, you know, you have the right pour and you got to get it out of the can. Yeah. It really should be. Every beer should be poured. I mean, yeah, it e- should. even out of a bottle. And that's to Nick's point. You know, we'll probably do a little bit of both. Um, it just depends on what market we're trying to do and where we're trying to ship to and that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So here's, here's the, uh, <laughs> the loaded question. Trevor wants to know, if you could only drink one beer for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm, gonna, I'm a prideful son of a bitch. I'm going down with my own beer. I'm going with a double IPA. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. We've, we've had, we put too much work to drink somebody else's beer, whether it's <laughs> shitty or not. I'm dying with our own, buddy. <laughs> going down with the ship yeah i mean nick's right because if i'm really only drinking one beer on a desert island i'm making it so yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go pick some palm tree fruit or some shit and yeah. you know something that's got sugar and throw it in and we'll ferment it and make beer absolutely but if i'm picking someone else's beer it'd probably be like sierra nevada bigfoot the barrel aged one that's delicious it's pretty good i like that uh let's see shannon wants to know what would you say to new craft beer drinkers or people that walk in off the street and they do the whole like, ew, I don't really like beer. What do you say? I, I, get, it all, <laughs> yeah, I get it all, every day. I, I get mad, it all I mean, you probably get a lot of wine drinkers that walk in oh, like, absolutely. oh, beer. Yeah. So I, I will. I'll say, you know what? And this is what's good about, you know, having the owner up front, you know, Nolan and I, either one of us is we've got no problem. Look at, I'll, I'll pour you a taster on me. 
just to let you see. Yeah. Try this, this double IPA. You know, it's been made where it's not real bitter at the end. It's been dry hopped over a certain amount of days, you know, whatever. Just give it a shot. And I've taken pictures. I've had multiple people <laughs> that we have got to drink an IPA for the first time. Nice. It's been our IPA. It's just letting them try it, not saying, well, you have to buy a pint and just let me know what you think. Right. It's here, man. Just, just try this out. You I know? like that. You should do video. You should have a whole section on your website, like people right. trying beer. I got the pictures. So. That'd yeah, be pretty good. That's, that's really it. Just getting people to try it. Um, it's obviously a lot easier now than five, ten years ago. People are right. really willing to try it. Um, even people we wouldn't expect. I mean, there's people... I. You know, I see him walking. Oh, I like Coors Light. And I'm like, oh, okay. Let's sure you see do. what happens here. Yeah. Jess wants to know what's the most annoying thing you've encountered in the taste room. Kind of goes along with the last question. Um. So, uh, you know, I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to a lot of suggestions. And and like I said in the beginning, you know, we we may even just try to make beers off of what people recommend. But we'll get people in here, and it's you know what you should do this, or you should do that, right. or you should have done this, and you should have done that, and they don't understand what it's taken to get into where you know get to where we're at, and and that it's not easy, so easy to do what you're recommending. So I think that might be the maybe the most annoying part is someone comes in and starts drinking, and they get drunk, and then start telling you everything you should have done. Not yeah. hey, look what you have done. It's like hey, are are you uh, are you brewing? No, yeah, exactly. And then finally, from John, John wants to know what advice would you give to someone who thinks they want to get into the craft beer industry? Make good beer, not <laughs> not run kicking and screaming. I know, <laughs> and and pray that you have the support. Pray that you have the support. I mean, if you're married, especially with kids, <laughs> uh, pray that you have that support and. You know, go after a passion, go after a dream. I, I read a lot of stuff, and Nolan and I went over a lot of stuff and said, hey, if you're not brewing over three barrels, you're wasting your time. Okay. It's just, I, I personally feel like it's the furthest thing from the truth if you're willing to put enough work into it. Like, I mean, we both work full times. Nolan's brewing his ass off I yeah. mean, all the time. And, you know, he was in here way before I was brewing. I mean, I was here last night late, but, you know, you've got to be willing to do that. It's not going to brew itself. And, you know, I love the wineries out there, but it, it doesn't <laughs> ferment itself. Yeah. <laughs> and, you got to be committed. I think that's the biggest thing is just if you're going to do it, you got to commit that you're going to make it happen. Um, there was so many times Nick and I were like, the fuck are we doing? Should we do this? Or should we just call it a day? You know, like, and we stuck it out and made it happen. And I mean, it's, it's happening now. It's here, you know, yeah, absolutely. finally we can sell people beer and yeah, it's here. You got beer, it. you got t-shirts, you got everything. Yeah. yeah. Got some TVs now. We didn't that's have right. TV up TVs last time you were here. I Those just went up. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. This one here just had a slideshow playing on it. Now we can, uh, now we can watch the Which games on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. All right. The very last thing I want to do, if this is okay with you guys, sure. can we, can, and it's up to you guys pick which one can we pick one beer and just kind of like go through a, a tasting of it? Yeah. Like kind of describe it and then sure. All that stuff. Let's do it. Yeah. Beer, you pick it. Uh, me pick it. I mean, yeah. I love that double IPA. Let's do it. I love when uh, the beer makers kind of walk you through, like, oh, you know, it smells like this. You should smell this. You should not smell this. You should taste this. Not. So we're drinking the double IPA. I, I, we've drank this so many times. I mean, I, I don't even have to taste it. I love it so much. <laughs> I'd die with it, like I said. Uh, and, and Nolan and I, keep, when we did this for the first time, we were so in love with it. And we, we passed it around. And we got that, oh, my God, this is the IPA I would drink. Yeah. And to the nose, it's so floral and, and smells so good. Yeah, so, I mean, whatever we tell you, doesn't matter. It's whatever you want, whatever you smell, whatever you True taste, that. honestly. Well, whatever it's like you art, like. whatever you kind of perceive. and Yeah, and that's, we make it kind of how we like it and taste what you taste and go from there, you know? So this one is built, it is a big double IPA. It's about 9% alcohol, eight and three quarters. Um, it's got a lot of hops, 99 IBUs. Um, but it's not a bitter beer. Not at all. So the nice thing about double IPAs is they have so much more malt to get that alcohol up that mm -hmm. balances the hops. And I don't believe in bitter beers. I'm not a huge fan of them. No bitter beer face? No. And <laughs> they're palate wreckers. You taste that and you're done yeah. for the day. You're like, all right, cool. I you're just... not pairing that with a tasty steak. Right. Yeah. So this is an easy, approachable double IPA. Um, real floral, real citrus. Um, this is the test Absolutely. batch, which actually is dry hopped with Citra and Centennial. Okay. Which we love Citra. It's my favorite hop. I wish I could find more. If there's any hop growers out there, plant more <laughs> Citra, please. Yeah, I mean, that tells you how good that, that hop is. And you, yeah, know, you got all these big boys getting the contracts, taking it all. So That's what I've heard from some smaller guys, that it, it's just so hard to come across Citra right now. It is. And that's, so we switched to Cascade 
for the main beer. But, it's still um, fairly popular hop absolutely. as well. It's still a great hop. It still gives a lot of that fruit and citrus and kind of grapefruit notes. Um, but the citrus is just more on the citrus side, more lemon lime. Mm-hmm. And it's a, I mean, it's a strong hop, so it just pops. Yeah. And it allows, it allows us to, you know, no one, especially right off the bat, was pretty anti-fruity beer, uh, you know, Good. which is understandable. Um, so this allowed us to get something with some floral and some citrus in it without having to, you know, pasteurize some fruit and right. whatever and get it in there. Great and, fruit IPA. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it keeps it, you know, legit and, uh, and good at the same time. Yeah, so it's, you smell some... Party fell. What do you smell, Greg? I, mean, I, I definitely... <laughs> I smell hey, I'm doing of, this interview. Yeah. <laughs> I smell a little bit of, you know, I can smell a little bit of malt, some of the high alcohol in there, you know. Definitely get some floral. Some floral from the Citra. This might be the longest I've just stared at this beer. <laughs> it does have a great I color. I smelt it, yeah. A little cloudy, a little dark. Yeah, hey, so you, kind of, you hey, when I pour an IPA and it's just like see-through, it's like, oh, right. oh, yeah. So, yeah, everything's unfiltered here, so we definitely have a little cloudy. Sometimes we get hot chunkies in there, which is kind of fun. A little extra bonus. Yeah. It's like wine when they say you get sediment in wine, it's actually better. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. And that's that's actually something I've got to explain to people a lot. Oh, why, what's in there? Why is it so cloudy? And Oh, it's unfiltered. And honestly, it's a big thing right now. People, oh, unfiltered? Right. There's a big perception of, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me get that. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's kind of like uh, nitro. Oh, yeah. it's on nitro? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Big <laughs> Which, if it wasn't meant to be on nitro, it tastes like shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nitro kills hop aroma, so that's a yeah. definitely a two, double-edged sword there. Well, those beers that are meant to be on nitro, right? And then they're on nitro, they're fucking amazing. But when you have this beer that was meant to be CO two, and you pour it on nitro, it's like, well, it's kind of weird and watery and creamy. And you're like this yeah. is great. Like, no, you don't really like beer, dude. <laughs> this is not that great. Yeah. But I love. I mean, this is yeah, like we said, very floral up front. It's got that nice malty finish on the, the tongue. Malty, yeah. I love that. Gives a little bit of sweetness. And that's really what kills that bitterness, too. You know? Exactly. You're not but finishing with some crazy hoppies. It also doesn't hang around too long, though, so you can have more of it. You don't sip it, and you're like, oh, man, that's so malty. I'm just going to have one sip and wait 10 minutes after right. sip. Yeah. It'd get people to order more. Right. Yeah, we, got, we, got, we got fortunate with this one, because if I remember correctly, this was a home run right, right from the first batch, I think. Yeah, nice. I... You kind of convinced me to make an IPA. I did. I was avoiding it <laughs> yeah. for a long time because you avoided a couple of them, and uh, that's what that, that's actually. It, it's hard, honestly. Jump into partnership. It, it's hard. You got two different, you know, minds. You got two different mm-hmm. ideas. You know, um, different palettes. Two different palettes. Yeah. Two different experiences. Yeah. And two my, different expectations. My thought was, everyone does IPAs. Like, why? Come on. There's so many yeah. great IPAs in California. Let's just not touch it. So when we built, when I built this, it was like, all right, fine. We'll do an IPA, but it's going to be. How I want to drink it. Yeah. And it turned out, yeah, it turned out awesome the it's first time. Delicious. We got, yeah. got lucky. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty and crazy. And it's the best selling beer. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's my favorite here. And, and the one thing I like about it, and I've talked about this on the show a lot, is it seems like a lot of breweries are doing this thing where it's like, hey, we want to pack as much hops in there to kick you in the face just because we can. Not because the flavor profile lends itself to that, just because we want to kick you in the teeth and say that it has 198 IBUs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But was it like you can't taste over 110 or something like well, that? Well, and honestly, <laughs> even with the hydrometer and getting the gravity off of this beer, we did not think it was going to be 99 IBUs because mm-hmm. every time we tasted it, especially brewing it before we opened this place, oh, yeah. it just doesn't drink like yeah. 99 IBUs. It just drinks like, what, 60 IBUs, you know, yeah. somewhere lower. And we literally sent it over to Baker Wine Analysis, which is two doors down, to confirm what <laughs> no one had come up with. And it came back at 99 IBUs legitimately from the scientist two doors down. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, and that's, in, it's a late hop edition beer, right? Don't do very much on the front end for mm-hmm. the bittering hops. It's just enough to balance the malt, really. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, last question I'll ask you is what, we talked about food, what would you love to eat with this double IPA? Honestly, for me, I, you know, I, I, I love barbecue. I'd still stick with barbecue, but also, yeah. too, with a bold, bold flavor, I wouldn't mind it with a piece of fish. Mm-hmm. I'm, I love fish. Uh, I was thinking some Thai food. Something oh, kind of spicy. I so, like that. So, I know so it's, it's a, a classic like IPA pairing, but because this is floral and citrusy, it would go really well with kind of like a spicy Thai noodle dish. Absolutely. I dig it. Uh, you guys, thank you so much. Hey, man, thank you. Yeah, yeah coming all the way up here. Having us. This is awesome. Thanks for giving me a nice little, little tasting yeah, no here. No problem. And, and it's because of you. We, we, we're open and, and people are coming in. It's people like you. It's, it, 
this is all we've had to do. I, I hope people listen and come in. I mean, it's fantastic. Well, we really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Before we get out of here, uh, plug yourselves a little bit. Websites, social medias. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Follow us there. Earth and Fire Brewing. Search it. Yeah. Figure it out. Google. We've got Google account. We've got Foursquare account. Um, check it out. Come by and see us. I mean, we got people uh, booking uh, hop on beer tours, which is out of San Luis Obispo. Mm-hmm. If you want to check out all the local breweries and just make little stops, check those guys out. I'd like to do a, a you know a shout out to them. Uh, they're yeah, helping us out. They've been another big help. Another. It's another awesome thing about this community is they came by and they talked to us. They're like, hey, we want to put you on the list. We're like, all right, yes, sweet. please. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So check them out. I mean, you know, we want to support everybody. Don't just come see us. Go see everybody. Nice. And the website is? Earthandfirebrewing.com. Brewing.com. Perfect. And we will have links up on our website, theunfilteredgentleman.com. If you guys forget, please check them out. If you're uh, on the central coast, if you're driving through, you can stop and have a beer. Just don't have, Absolutely. you know, tons of beer. Cheers. Grab a grab a, a growler right here. Cheers, Salud. fellas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you once again to Nick and Nolan up there, Earth and Fire Brewing Company. I had a great time. Those guys were super awesome. Uh, thank you for the time that you guys spent with us and for uh, sampling some beers and all that. Really, really appreciate it. If you guys are up on the central coast of California, look, let's be honest. A lot of people make that pilgrimage up to Firestone Brewing. There is no shame in that. Love me some Firestone. But while you're up there, why don't you head yourself across the freeway, literally across the freeway, Say what's up to Nick and Nolan over at Earth and Fire. Try a few of their beers as well. And hell, let them know where you heard them from. You heard them right here on The Unfiltered Gentleman. I think they'll really like that. Uh, Also, there's going to be some video of our interview up on YouTube. I'll also post links on all of our social medias. uh, Facebook.com, Unfiltered Gentleman, at Unfiltered Gents on Twitter, and uh, of course on Instagram, The Unfiltered Gentleman. I'll be posting links so you guys can find it, but uh, we will put video up of this interview so you can see us in action, drinking, tasting, talking, all that good stuff. Do check that out. Let them know when you go up there that you heard them here on the podcast. And hey, if you do get up there and try them, which I really, really hope you do, let us know what you think. Hey, we enjoyed the hell out of them. So if uh, you enjoyed the beer, let us know. Of course, let the fellas up there know, Nick and Nolan, tell them what's up. Help spread the love across some local breweries. Drink local, everybody. And don't forget... Post some pictures on uh, Instagram. Tag us. Put the hashtag show us your beers, especially if it's Earth and Fire. We want to see those beer pics and everything else. And don't forget to check us out at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Like I was saying before, every week we post our beer of the week right up there. It's delicious. You want to try it. All that good stuff. So once again, thank you to Nick and Nolan, Earth and Fire Brewery. Do not miss an opportunity to check them out if you're in the area. And thank you guys for listening to the show, for showing your love to us, hopefully showing some love to Nick and Nolan. And on that note, good night, everybody.